All right. Hi, Kara. Hi. How are you? I am doing great. Thanks so much for joining tonight. Yeah, totally. Very, congratulations. Very, very exciting. Uh, it, it, listen, it absolutely is. And first, let me just introduce you. So Kara is the founder and CEO of Hint. And she was kind enough to offer the case that we just gave away to Octavia. Um, so thank you very much for that. And Kara also has a book. Oh, I should have had it. She also has a book coming out in like two weeks called yeah. Undaunted, which is fantastic. I got a sneak peek. Um, so congratulations on that, Kara. Thank you. The author sisters over here, right? There you go. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you know, it was interesting because, you know, when I was, um, when I was working on setting up our time to talk, I decided I wanted to read a piece. So give me, give me a second. Let me just read a little section and then we'll start oh. our conversation. Because I think that just fits in well. All right. This is in the chapter of Create Your Own Luck. I am CEO. Snapping my eyes open in the pre-dawn darkness of my bedroom, my husband sleeping quietly behind, beside me, I hear this thought reverberating through my mind as loud as 4th of July fireworks, ricocheting everywhere off every corner of my brain. I am CEO. It is way too early to be awake, but I can no longer pretend sleep is an option for me on this Monday, my first day in my new role. I take a deep breath and exhale, trying to calm myself, not wanting to let this extraordinary moment slip past. I close my eyes and assess my feelings. A single question filters into my consciousness. How did I get here? I chuckle softly into the quiet. It's a silly question. It's not as if I dropped down into this moment out of the blue. I walked every single painstaking step it took to get here. I spent decades learning, growing, planning, overcoming, strategizing, making intentional choices, taking calculated risks, and working hard, really, really hard to get to this exact place. But somehow, I'm amazed that I've arrived. So amazed, I want to go back to the beginning and watch it all happen again. How exactly did I get here? That's the start. Of, that's how I start the book. So the question is, did you have an I am CEO moment? Because you found, you started differently. I was hired into it. You actually founded your company. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's an interesting question. I think um, I, I've had that moment many times through, throughout the time, um, including actually trying to, um, you know, figure out during challenging times, you know, how to actually lead and, and make sure that, everybody's marching in the right direction and and you know to some extent it's not too much different from parenting right and being able to sort of share that you're you've got to try and you've got to get up and you've got to keep you know moving but i think that that is is really um i can't say that there's one specific time in particular um but you know it, it's interesting because i think in the case of of hint, I had worked at, you know, other companies, was never the CEO, um, but I didn't really aspire to um, kind of start my own company, though, either. It was really just solving a problem for myself and for my family, and that's really how it got started, and a lot of what I talk about in my book is is really, you know, that, and, and but I think it's, it's um, I, I feel like there's so many similarities for for people just in in kind of like I said, trying to get through challenging times in life, but also starting companies where you know you don't necessarily have the roadmap or the answers, but you have you know the ability to to really just go for it, right? Which is obviously uh, unapologetically ambitious. Um, you over there, like that's exactly what you've done. So I think that that is, um, I mean, I just loved your book and it was so inspiring to just really hear it. I, I'm also a huge believer that what people do need to hear in order to kind of get out of the gate or keep going are those stories from 
you know, leaders and, um, and whether you started a company or whether you were actually the CEO of a company, I think it's, it's really the same thing. So um, that's, that's really what I got out of the book. So. Uh, well, thank you. It's interesting. Yeah. You touched on, you touched on the fact that um, in the beginning it was kind of like parenting, you know, pulling people together and, and things. And honestly, when people ask me, so what are the experiences that really prepared you to be CEO? And one of the ones I always say is being a mom, <laughs> because yeah. it's really all about how do we get everybody to work and play well together in the sandbox? <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I mean, I think that's, so, I think it's so true. And I think it's just also, you know, things like not knowing all the answers. I mean, I, you know, talk about when I had kids, I thought I was the smartest um, kid on the block. And then, you know, suddenly I'm stressed out about making sure that I have the diaper on right, right? Like how many times have, you know, you tried to do something and you just know that you just have to go try and have to keep moving forward. And, you know, even launching a book during a pandemic, I mean, it's, it's, you know, people want the roadmap and, you know, it's like, guess what? There isn't one, right? You just have to move forward and try things. And I think that that's really, you know, the most important thing to do. And, and of course there are people that will just freeze and not be able to move forward. But I, I've just also been such a huge believer in, in, you know, personal life as, as well as professional life that you do have to move and, and start to just try. Yeah. When matter of fact, one of the things that we have in common, Kara, is the way I approach risks is I always ask myself, okay, what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. And can I live with it? Yeah. And I think you actually do something similar. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, you know, it really, I think ever since I was a kid, I, I used to do that. And, you know, in times when things were really scary for me, both of my parents would say never together in the same room. That was way too, too <laughs> much. I think they would just instead, they, maybe they thought it was too much power that I would have at that point to just go and do something. But I really think that that's an important thing um, to kind of recognize and also pull apart when you're trying to figure out kind of scary things is what is the worst that can happen. And they're measured differently too. I mean, in my case, when I moved, when I was uh, living in Arizona, graduated from school and decided I wanted to move to New York. And I remember I was getting really cold feet before I left. And and my dad actually said that to me. He said, what's the worst that can happen? And I said, well, I mean, I'm going to New York City. There's a lot of things that can happen. And he said, realistically, like, what is the worst that can happen? And, you know, in, in this case, he said, you know, you should figure out, like, what is your financial risk? And, like, add up what it would cost to get out of an apartment lease, what it would cost to you know, buy a plane ticket back home, all of these things, which probably won't happen. But if you actually know what the risk is, then, you know, it really helps you to kind of, eh, that's not that bad. I mean, maybe I'll have to pay off a credit card for a little bit longer or, you know, something like that. But I think like that is something that I use those tools, even in making decisions in business that I think, you know, you definitely should look at that, look at the landscape, but also figure out like how bad it could be. And once you start to go through that, you know, exercise, I think it really is useful. I fully, listen, I fully agree because I think more people should take more risks. Frankly, you know, a lot of us, we don't take risks because we're afraid, but if we actually take the time to figure out, okay, but what are we really afraid of? What is the worst that can happen? So once you visualize it and realize how either unlikely it is or the fact that, you know, it won't kill you. Right? It, yeah. won't, it won't bankrupt you. You won't lose your family or your home or, you know, whatever. Then I think it makes you more comfortable actually taking risk and taking totally. risk is huge, right? To getting opportunities, to getting rewards, et cetera. So that's why it's one of the line items in the title, right? Take risks. <laughs> I really want yeah. people to and take more how many of those? How many of those risks too have you done, Shelly, where you've actually been able to share stories about overcoming things, right? And, and also give yourself more confidence to actually go and take that next risk because, you know, you remember that time when you couldn't really get through something 
or you, or you were thinking you couldn't get through something mm -hmm. and then you went ahead and tried and you did it. And I think that all of those challenges, whether or not they turned out the way that you wanted to, you're, you know, still moving and alive to be able to talk about it. And it just gives you power and strength. It does. It's all about building that, I call it building the muscle. You know, the more you do it, the more strength you build, just like exercise, right? The more, more curls you do, the stronger your biceps are going to become. It's just the way it works. Same thing for courage. So uh, a thousand percent. So I totally great. agree. Oh yeah. And you've shown so much courage, but part of that also is having the right people supporting us. I mean, mm -hmm. I had Scotty, who's, you know, just an amazing, amazing life partner and always supportive. And I know Theo has been that for you as well. Yeah. And now, you know, as I was talking to an entrepreneur with young kids um, over the weekend and, and I said, look, it's hard when your kids are really young and, you know, you're homeschooling them and trying to have a business. I mean, I, I, I can't imagine. I can imagine a little bit, but I can't say that I've been in your shoes. But what I can say is that, you know, when you actually accomplish, accomplish these things, I mean, having teenagers and a little bit older than that now, I feel like I'm really able to say from the other side, and I know you're the same, that what have your, you know, kids learned as yeah. well, and how have they supported you? And, um, and I think that that's, you know, it's a great feeling. It's also one that I think people need to hear. Um, you know, you and I have talked about that a little bit, um, but it's definitely, you know, your kids are your, you know, big supporters as well. So it doesn't just stop even with just a spouse or a great team. I think it really look, you know, it, it helps um, kids become sort of who they are today to see you as a powerful role model in their family. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can get cheerleaders. You know, I talk about cheerleaders in the book. And I talk about all the struggles too in the book um, yeah. because it's hard. And I don't want people to think that it's easy because so many people, you hear stories of folks becoming CEO or rising to a certain point, And it sounds like they just took step A, step B, step C, and bing, they made yeah. it, right? It's so easy. And then when it's hard for you, you're thinking, all right, I must not be cut out for it because it's just so hard. No, it's hard for everybody. It's just that most yeah. people don't talk about it. Um, yeah. So keep That's pushing. Awesome. Yeah, right? a thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, and you know, as you know, I mean, I, I like to talk about it, that in my book too. I don't think that there are enough, you know, women leaders that are writing books about how challenging it is at times. It's not easy, right? And I think there's way easier ways to make money, and and I think that more you know, leaders like yourself need to really write down these stories because they're, they're really important for, you know, other people um, around us to hear, but also the next generation and the generation after that to hear, like, you can go do it if you actually set your mind to it. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Well, Kara, thank you so much for joining and good luck on your, I'm going to be rooting for you on your launch day in thank two weeks. Thank you so much. And thanks everybody. I'm on Kara Golden on social if anybody wants to say hello. So anyway, congratulations, Shelly. So excited for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining in.